Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone with Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And in an event like this, the lighting is terrible. I'm not even going to try to fix that because it's not about how it falls on me. It's about how it falls on this. DJI just introduced the Mavic Air. It is the son of the Spark and the Mavic. Here's the Spark right here. What's interesting is that it's actually smaller when you consider the fact that you can't fold the arms. It is about the footprint of my iPhone 10. The newly designed controller gets even smaller because you can screw in the little levers. I have to say, it's another thing I'm going to have to spend money on. It's not just, just what DJI has done with the Mavic Air, which to be brief, is to update and improve just about everything in the Mavic Pro and Spark and shrink the result into a new form factor, which is, at least from a travel perspective, even smaller than the Spark. Although, I think folks eyeing the Phantom 4 may have pause as well. Okay, I should probably unpack those assertions a little bit, so let me do that before I get on to other points. The Air is, as I just said, smaller than the Mavic Pro, but it's better built. It has a more robust feel to it in the hand, and it is a more beautiful design, a more sorted design. Which is not to say the Mavic Pro is in any way flimsy or badly built or ugly. I mean, anything, but it's just that the Air feels and looks better, more sorted, more thoughtful. As you saw, even the joysticks of the Air's controller screw and unscrew, and it's easy to do, not fiddly, to reduce total travel space required. The Air's camera system, the totality, is better than the Mavic Pro's, with a slightly wider full field of view, uh, full frame equivalent of 24 millimeter versus the Mavic Pro's 28, 24 being my favorite, an increase in bit rate from 60 to 100 megabits per second, a resolution bump at 120 frames per second from HD at 720 in the Mavic Pro to full HD at 1080. New HDR processing, improved focus tracking, which allows you to select one subject from as many as 16 simultaneously tracked objects. Two new intelligent flight modes called Asteroid and Boomerang. The Boomerang especially being quite extraordinary at delivering cinematic shots and a 32 megapixel panorama mode. The Air now has seven freaking cameras at the service of what DJI calls Flight Autonomy 2.0, which in turn enables something they call APAS or Advanced Pilot Assistance Program, which allows the Air to not simply stop when it sees an obstacle but fly around or over it, which is great for me because I've always been concerned about return to home. The Air sports eight gigabytes of onboard memory to which I can only say, DJI, thank you for not making me feel like an idiot. As in, apparently I'm not the only one who's forgotten to bring micro SD cards, realizing that fact only as I'm pulling my drone out of the bag on location. The Air fits into my usual camera bag without the need for taking anything out. This is just off the hook. Which is just a little bit different from this. There's more. Like the Air is slightly faster top speed than and again, superior obstacle navigation compared to the Mavic Pro and in fact the Phantom Pro 4 and less. The Air is $200 cheaper than the Pro at $799 for the base kit, $300 cheaper at $999 for the Fly More combo and $700 less than the Phantom 4 Pro in base configuration. 
The Air offers only 21 minutes of flight time compared to the Pro's 27 and the Pro Platinum's 30, which doesn't bother me, is spec'd for video transmission latency of 170 to 240 milliseconds versus the Pro's 160 to 170. I'm not sure if that will matter. Offers maximum video resolution in live view of 720 at 30 frames per second versus the Pro's 1080. I'm not sure if that will matter. Offers a maximum of 30 frames per second in 4K versus the 60 frames per second, not of the Mavic Pro, but the Phantom 4. Hold that thought. And a few I don't yet knows. Most critically from where I sit, whether or not the Air has the dual GPS GLONASS capability as the Pro, or even my two-year-old Phantom 3 Professional 4K, and whether or not the Air is compatible with the new Crystal Sky high brightness and ultra high brightness monitors. Those are really interesting to me. Although, hang on. Uh, Mike says yes to both. The Air has dual GPS and Crystal Sky compatibility. Yeah. So, what's the bottom line? Well, the first one is, if any of you want to buy a Phantom 3 Professional 4K with extra battery and nice hard shell case, I'm putting mine up uh, tonight on eBay. Seriously. And the second, more important point to make is this. In the real world of web video compression, small screens, limited attention spans, an audience, for the most part, not as knowledgeable or as critical as we are about image quality, and the value of traveling really light, both physically and economically, the Mavic Air, I think it's fair to say, has just redefined the optimal balance point across all of DJI's consumer drones, and in fact, the entire industry. Now. With all of this said, the biggest news to me in that three blind men and an elephant big picture kind of way, other than it's time for me to go from my Phantom directly to the air, do pass pro, and do collect at least $200 in savings as a result, get the reference, is the other stuff I saw on display at yesterday's launch, as in DJI is thinking like Apple. No, DJI is channeling Apple profoundly from Mike Perry's physical mannerisms, verbal cadences. I should probably say right here that I think Mike is just a super guy and this in no way is teasing him. And content. Uh, how it's all about making the complex simple, uh, never losing sight of the fact that this is a creative tool rather than a technology, to the never mind that we don't have a Joni Ive, we've got a British accented narrator, to the languid, gorgeous product shots. Everything screams, oozes. I mean, just look. I don't know about you guys, but I'm incredibly inspired to go to Patagonia right now and can't wait to take my Mavic Air with me. With the Mavic Air, DJI is once again reinventing consumer drones as a creative tool. This is the most portable, intelligent, and powerful drone ever. The new Mavic Air is a marvel of engineering and design an ultra-portable device that stretches the boundaries of what's possible for a drone this size. To do this, we had to reimagine the most efficient design possible. Each and every aspect has been refined and optimized, from its radical, foldable design down to every line and polished curve. But hold this thought too, because there is one other thing that screams Apple, and one thing that doesn't. DJI is innovating like Sony. 
It's not slow walking innovation as some companies in this industry do, but instead launching new products as soon as those innovations are market ready, all at a rate that leaves everyone else in the dust. Although it has to be asked at this point, who's really left with 3DR's exit from the consumer space and GoPro's exit from the drone space altogether? Right. Well, the just shown at CES, but who knows when it will ship, Autel Robotics Evo with 60 frames per second in 4K, built-in OLED screen in the controller, and both tracking and obstacle avoidance that, on first blush, appear similar to the air. Now, as an aside, I hope Autel is successful because we all benefit from competition Though, if the GoPro Karma is any indication, DJI's timing seems impeccable now a second time in rapid succession, just made the Evo much less interesting. Anyway, the other thing that screams Apple, computational imaging, the Air's 3D terrain mapping, is another use case for the same kind of technology Apple uses in its iPhone X for Face ID. Maybe even a branch of the same technology uh, that it uses in its dual camera compositing techniques. And those technologies are extraordinary. In fact, I see DJI becoming a leader in this field. You can actually argue it already is. Although, one thing that hasn't traditionally screamed Apple at DJI is customer service. But DJI's Care Refresh seems a heck of a start, very much like Apple Care. An extra cost extended warranty for, in the case of the Mavic Air, $89, and which for some I don't see. Uh, on the website can include up to two replacements. When phone support also reaches Apple levels of responsiveness, expertise, humanity, and a consistent, obvious commitment to customer satisfaction, well, heck, when you don't have to hunt the website to find a support phone number, or constantly get hyperlinked back to yet another page of text on the site, DJI will have made it that much harder for any competitor to muscle in. That's about brand loyalty. Okay, now, with all of this said, I want to stop for a moment to explore, uh, tee up really, because this is another subject for another time. The implications of what I saw yesterday for another part of DJI. Yeah, I'm talking about medium format camera manufacturer Hasselblad. Suddenly, for the first time, I see an incredible who to thunk it future for Hasselblad, not just because DJI can infuse state-of-the-art computational imaging and focus tracking into a legendary photo company, because make no mistake, DJI already is a photo company the same way Apple is not just because the economics of and lessons learned from manufacturing and delivering hundreds of thousands of drones into the market each year dwarf what can be done, say, over a couple of thousand, maybe, at best, medium format bodies per year. Not just because with the X1D, Hasselblad has reached a critical inflection point where it will likely have to choose between volume and niche to survive, and DJI's experience going to volume will be invaluable. Not just because both DJI and Hasselblad have the best user interfaces in their respective segments, not even because both companies' origin stories are steeped in aviation, not even that both companies were founded by enthusiasts. Instead, 
I see a a once-in-a-corporate-lifetime recombinant DNA play, perhaps the only play that can take on the giants like Sony, Canon, and Nikon, where they remain weak. An extraordinary user experience, priced for the rest of us. But, hey, that's just me. I've been wrong before. And that's probably way more than you wanted to know about what I think about Hasselblad anyway, at least in a video about the Mavic Air. Well, that's it for now, until I get my hands on a Mavic Air. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below, share with everyone you know on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even LinkedIn, because it helps us Get the word out. Add to a playlist. And finally, please, support our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links or even making a contribution directly via the PayPal link below. As always, we thank you for it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Bradstone. See you next time.